Hi, I'm Pat Kiernan. Glad you could be with us for today's edition of Pat's Papers. We go through the nation's newspapers to bring you the highlights. Here's our top story today. The Democrats have missed a chance to cement their majority in the Senate. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution leading with coverage of the runoff election that was necessary in the close race in Georgia. Sitting Republican Saxe Chambliss will return to Washington. The Democrats could have made it to 60 seats with a win, which would have made their majority filibuster-proof. The, the trouble of the American auto industry is a big story again today in the Washington Post, a story that includes details of the plans the companies have presented to Congress to try to make a case that a bailout will actually help them to turn things around. The Detroit News recapping the November sales figures, which Ford, GM, and Chrysler all released yesterday. GM down 41% compared to last year. Ford down 30%. Chrysler down 47%. GM says it needs $4 billion in loans immediately to avoid a cash crisis by the end of December. Ford says it might be able to survive without help, but it has asked for $9 billion just in case. The New York Times leading with the story as well, and with a sidebar story. The headline there is, even in home of car makers, not everyone wants a lifeline. The Times interviews people in Michigan who don't agree with the bailout of the dominant industry in their state. Although one guy says you, you keep your head down if you're one of the opponents. On the front page of the Wall Street Journal, the investigation in Mumbai moving ahead. India is demanding Pakistan take action against the militant group thought to be behind the attacks last week. The Washington Post report has a follow-up that says the terrorists are very tech-savvy. They had global positioning system equipment. They carried Blackberries and multiple cell phones with switchable SIM cards that would be hard to trace. As seen here in the LA Times, the occupation of Bangkok's two international airports is over. The Prime Minister resigned today. Protests began on November 25th. On the front page of this newspaper, after 30 years as a fugitive running from child sex charges, Director Roman Polanski wants to come in from the cold. Polanski's lawyers are relying on new evidence of unethical conduct by a prosecutor and the trial judge. Doctors in training should not be working 30-hour shifts. That uh, from the LA Times summarizing a report by the Institute of Medicine which says risks to patients can be reduced if those student doctors work no longer than 16 hours in a row. The report also suggests a cap of 80 hours a week. To the New York Post, cruise lines said to be reevaluating their routes that the ships travel when they're near Somalia. Six bandits chased a cruise ship and fired shots at the tourist ship called the MS Nautica. The pirates until now have mostly been interested in cargo ships. Two stories from the Post's Pulse section of note this morning. Writer Carlos Pardo is offering three recommendations of great wines available for under $10 a bottle. The gimmick here was that all of the bottles were picked because they had great looking labels. Speaking of great looking, uh, yeah, I actually have no particular news to report here, but uh, this is, was just my excuse to look at supermodels this morning. Uh, the Victoria's Secret fashion show is on CBS tonight, and the, the Post uh, works up some sort of backstage preview story along with photos. To the Arizona Republic, which says it seems like everybody there is getting caught by a new web of radar speed enforcement cameras. The state has issued 40,000 tickets in just the first two months of this camera program. That's brought in more than $6 million in revenue. A particularly eye-catching front-page headline in the New York Daily News, the paper confesses to stealing the Empire State Building. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of these stories that uh, is an investigation that will give people ideas about how they might commit fraud. Uh, here's how it went to undercover weak security in the process for transferring titles to property in New York. The newspaper had a fake notary stamp made up and was actually successful in getting a deed to the two billion dollar building. They have since turned it back. Uh, some remarkably finite numbers in the New York Times this morning on the price of human life. It is a story about the cost of drugs to put a limit on uh, health care costs, the British government sets a determination on how much it will pay to extend the life of someone who is dying. The government says extending a life by six months is worth a maximum of 15,000 pounds in treatment costs. That works out to about $23,000. You would uh, you'd be lucky if $23,000 is all you pay for a U.S. college education in the years ahead. A report in the Times says if education costs continue to rise, college will soon be unaffordable for most Americans. We'll finish with two items from Washington, the Washington Post, covering the debut of the new Capitol Visitor Center. It'll be the gateway for some three million tourists every year who visit the Capitol building. 
The space accommodates security, exhibits, restaurants, and shops, and it costs $620 million. Finally, uh, we meet blogger Carol Blymeyer. Her chosen task is to cook every recipe from a particularly challenging cookbook. Uh, she'll do that in her home. The recipes are from a Chicago restaurant called Alinea, which is known for its tough-to-prepare presentation. In the story, uh, she admits to being worried that her popcorn kernels yielded only 106 grams of corn, and the recipe clearly demanded 125 grams of popcorn to be a success. And that's a report for today. I'm Pat Kernan. We do this every day. Patspapers.com is where you will find the complete list of all of the stories we featured today, along with links to the individual newspaper websites.